sorry guys, my phone started to ring, so I will start right around there again. <sighs> the red clay from which he had fashioned pots and dishes inspired him to try his hand at making something just for its own sake, something beautiful. He made a life-size statue of Amanda. Though it didn't really resemble her, it did look like a female mouse. He was amazed at what he had made. Good or bad, it was sculpture. It was art. He tried again and again, profiting from his mistakes. And finally, he felt he had a likeness of his wife that was real enough to embrace. He wants to hug it. Next, he made statues of his dear, indulgent mother, from whose wealth his own income came, and of his various sisters and brothers, and he stood them all outside his log where he could see them from his windows. Another day, he made his father. Him, he carved in tough wood, fiercely gnawing the forms out with his teeth. He stood back often to study the results of his gnawing, and at last he felt he had captured the proud, stern, aloof, strong, honest look of his male parent. He stood this statue next to that of his mother. I'm gonna show you a picture of what that may have looked like. Here are all of his uh, statues that he made outside of his log of um, his wife, his brothers and sisters, mother, father, yeah. Abel's an artist, apparently. Abel had not been keeping track of the days, but the color of the leaves was being transformed from green to various yellows, burning golds, flaming reds, and he realized it was October. He gathered masses of fluff from the seed pods of milkweed to keep him warm in his log. With threads of grass, he wove mats for his floor and curtains for his windows to keep the drafts out and he tacked these curtains up with thorns. Later, he made shutters out of bark. He relayed the news of his doings to Amanda, sure that his airborne messages were reaching her. He added to his winter storage of food at what he thought was her urging. And meanwhile, he kept dining on what remained available outdoors. At night, from its eminence, his star shone down on him with proud approval. When the trees were in the full flame of autumn's fire, Abel wandered aimlessly over the island until the sight of the high color had him glowing inwardly with sensations of yellow, orange, and red. He pressed the juice from elderberries he had garnered earlier in the month and stored it in clay pots to let it turn to wine. His paws and shirt were stained with purple, but he no longer cared about his appearance. In gray November, when the dry leaves huddled and drifts on the ground, he made a remar remarkable discovery. He thought he had thoroughly explored the island. He hadn't. Near the lower end by the eastern shore, he found a huge watch with a chain and an enormous book. The watch was as large as a dining table to accommodate three mice. The book was four tails long, three wide, and almost a tail thick. There was a stone on top of it, and it was the stone, no doubt, and the lay of the ground that had kept it from being washed away in the flood. Judging by its condition, the book had been there quite some time and had seen several changes of weather in addition to the flood. The cloth binding was puffed into blisters and wrinkled. The title of it? Sons and Daughters, was faded and hard to read. Some large creature had been on the island, perhaps picnicking, and had gone away forgetting the book and the watch. Probably the stone had been placed on the book to keep it from blowing open. Here's a picture of what he found. It's a picture of Abel finding the book and the watch. It looks like a pocket watch. Stone on top of the book. So you can see how big Abel is compared to these things. Of course, he's a mouse. Abel's heart raced. The island was known to civilized creatures then, and it would be visited again. He would have to leave signs all about the island to make his presence known. 
Meanwhile, he was curious about the book. With great effort, he rolled away the stone, which was larger than himself, and pried the stiff cover open. The pages were buckled and water-stained, but the type was clear enough. He managed to separate the title page from page one, and he began reading, pacing from side to side on the printed lines. The book opened in the dis with a description of a masquerade ball. The characters were bears, which, like other large animals, had always fascinated Abel. It was wonderful to have a long book to entertain him and to keep him company. He decided to read one chapter each day. He closed the book and carefully buried it under a heap of leaves to prevent further damage by the sun and rain. Then, with the end of the chain slung over his shoulder, he began hauling the watch back to his house. It was heavy, but the smooth platinum of the case slid over the dry fallen leaves and made the hauling not too hard. Let's see how much longer. Okay. So that was the end of chapter nine. I am going to stop the video right here and I will come back with chapter 10 in just a minute.